Hi, I've clicked on to today's Tropical Tibbet for Thursday, July 4th, and happy Independence Day to my fellow Americans that may be watching. And it certainly is a wet 4th here over the eastern Gulf Coast, lots of tropical moisture streaming northward into the Florida panhandle and parts of uh, Alabama and Mississippi as well. Uh, we were watching this system uh, since yesterday or so uh, to see if some quick little low pressure area could wind up. Uh, which you can see a little bit of if you look at the low level clouds here there's a little bit of low pressure trying to form just south of Mobile Bay quickly moving inland though no, inland though now and I'm not really impressed with the look of this it did not manage to form any kind of a warm bubble aloft here and get rid of some of this wind shear so we have lots of lots of upper winds shearing it from the southwest and this really didn't have the time to feed back like some of the models had but you can see a little bit of low pressure developing, but it will not cause any more impacts than you would have had anyway. Heavy rain coming ashore. As we talked about last week, this big south to north flow in the Gulf of Mexico generally is not conducive for development of a focused storm, and uh, that is the difficulty we are seeing here. So really nothing to look at here except for a lot of heavy rain coming into Florida. Uh, there is another batch of low pressure currently over the Yucatan, which is weak at the moment, but is forecasted to move north into the western half of the Gulf of Mexico during the next few days. And this may also have to be watched warily as some of the models similar with this system try to wind it up just a little bit. This is the GFS out uh, at 84 hours. This would be Sunday night and you can see a ball of low level vorticity showing up here in these colors. That's indicating low level spin, so that's an area of low pressure coming into Louisiana. These wind barbs are at the 200 millibar level, so in the upper levels of the troposphere, and this upper low is backing away. So when you have an upper low backing away, it generally helps ventilate systems like this, so it's worth watching. Uh, I'm not terribly excited about it, but the models do hint that a circulation could develop. Similar to what we had over here, not really a threat to become anything really strong, uh, but it is something to watch for increasing rain chances and gusty winds for the Texas and Louisiana coastlines uh, later this weekend and perhaps into Monday. Now if we look at the uh, big picture here, there is one more area to watch uh, and that would be this upper low that you can kind of see here. You might be able to see it spinning in the upper clouds. This is cutting off from an elongated upper trough right now in the central Atlantic. This is splitting away and moving this way. And that is going to be interacting possibly with this tropical wave that is very large here moving towards the northwest. This will be moving underneath of this upper low or close to it and that is a situation that always has to be monitored. However, uh, it's becoming less and less exciting of a setup in the upper levels. This is the GFS again Sunday night. We just showed you this, uh, but at the same time, here's this upper low coming towards the Bahamas, and there is a tropical wave somewhere near or underneath of this upper low. Always something to be watched, but if you look at the satellite right now, there's a large flow, um, trade wind flow from east to west over the Greater Antilles Islands here, and this kind of a flow when it's moving this fast is not very conducive for low pressure developing. So it's not looking terribly exciting for development from this system. Uh, I will keep an eye on it anyway, but none of the models develop it, and it's looking less likely uh, that this will be able to take advantage of the situation. The environment in the large scale is not terribly favorable for development. Now, looking farther on in the future here, uh, we have the MJO, which we've been harping on, has been focusing itself in phases one and two, which favor upward motion in the Atlantic. And an upward motion causes more thunderstorms and can make the environment more favorable for general development. And you can see the model forecasts here in the colors uh, are all over the place, but they're in the same general area for the next two weeks or so, and that would be in the Atlantic. So that means the environment will be somewhat favorable at any rate uh, for things to happen. And this is the GFS ensembles showing uh, some red numbers here in the Central Atlantic by day 11. These indicate areas of low pressure forecasted by the model, and the background green and yellow colors here indicate ensemble disagreement, which indicates that some members are indeed forecasting strong tropical waves and or low pressure areas in the Eastern Atlantic um, during this time. And this is something that we've been watching moving up on the CFS, the GFS, even the Canadian ensembles, and now even the European out to day 10 is showing what, you know, would be a strong tropical wave coming west of the Cape Verde Islands. 
And uh, waves are not uh, obviously abnormal to see. We get about a hundred of them every year. Not everyone is going to develop. Um, but the uh, point here is is that we're now getting deeper into July by this time. And once we get past mid-July here, July 15th or so, with the MJO in our area of the world, we may have to start watching the area east of the Caribbean for these tropical waves to potentially start developing for the first time this year. It's generally late July into August that we start to watch for them. They may start developing a little bit earlier than usual this year, um, but we will have to monitor that. That is still in the long range, not an imminent threat. So for right now, um, this is moving ashore, only bringing heavy rain on this holiday here into the eastern Gulf Coast, so kind of a nasty day here, uh, but no threat for development anymore. Uh, there is another area of low pressure here that will be coming up during the next three days. May have to be watched for some possible low-level development, but again, not really a significant threat in my mind. Um, uh, we'll just increase rain chances along Texas and Louisiana coastlines for Sunday and Monday. And then we have this upper level low interacting with the tropical wave that will be coming towards the Bahamas in five or six days. Again, large scale environment looking fairly unfavorable at this point and the models do not develop it. So again, we have lots to watch, but all of the chances for all of these systems are on the rather low side. So really no significant threats in the near future, just lots of little things to keep an eye on just in case they surprise us. And then of course, later down the road, we will have to watch this area of the world. So we will keep an eye on this. A fairly typical July so far in the Atlantic, some things to watch, but no significant development as of yet. We will keep an eye on this pattern and we shall see what happens. All right, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.